Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 75th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. To start off, I want to talk about OS X Mountain Line, which is Apple's next installment to OS X, and it is set to be released sometime this summer. So basically, Mountain Line builds upon OS X Lion, which was supposed to bring certain parts of the iPad's magical experience to OS X. However, even though Lion did bring a lot of great features to the Mac, there were still a couple of things that were missing, and that's why they're actually going to release Mountain Lion. And for those of you that don't know, I'll give you a brief rundown. Mountain Lion or OS 10.8 will have over 100 new features, but its highlighted features include messages, notification center, airplay mirroring, a specific notes application, reminders, game center, the ability to share different pages and photos with your friends over Twitter, and deeper iCloud integration. So to start off, Messages is a new cross-platform messaging application. So once Mountain Line is officially released, Mac users will not only be able to communicate with other Mac users through instant messaging, but they will also be able to communicate with iOS, iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch users. And basically the messages will come through to both your iOS-based device and your Mac if you have one. So that's definitely great. And I'm a little surprised it took them this long to actually get something like that implemented. And for those of you that want to try it out now, you can. You don't even need a developer account. All you have to do is go to Apple's sneak peek page and then you can find a download link to the beta version of messages for OS X and it will work on 10.7.3. Notification Center is similar to how it is on iOS. It's basically a centralized location for all of your notifications and it puts Growl to shame. So no longer will users have to use Growl and be pestered to actually purchase the full version of Growl. With Mountain Lion, you'll just have a built-in notification system thanks to the new Notification Center edition to OS X. And perhaps one of the things that people are most excited about is AirPlay mirroring. So with AirPlay mirroring, you'll be able to mirror exactly what you see on your Mac to your TV via the Apple TV and a Wi-Fi connection. So it will even mirror your desktop, your applications that you're running, and even videos that you stream from your Mac to your TV, and unfortunately, due to the nature of the Apple TV, it's only in 720p. However, this is definitely something great that they will keep using in the future, and once they release a better TV, this feature will be absolutely great. And the developer preview of Mountain Lion is available right now. However, again, it does require that you have access to a developer account, and to get set up with a developer account, you do need to pay a yearly fee to Apple of $99, but if you don't have a developer account, you can simply wait until this summer. It will be available for purchase on the Mac. Mac App Store for OS X users. Also, I'm sure as most of you know, prior to the refresh of a specific product, Apple slowly hinders the production of said product, causing shortages, and the iPad is no exception. A source familiar with Apple distribution channels claims that there are shortages of the Wi-Fi and 3G model iPad 2. And even though Apple is still maintaining iPad 2, 3G, and Wi-Fi model stock, it doesn't mean that other distribution channels are, because Orange and Carphone Warehouse both have a limited quantity of these iPads available. So this just points to the inevitable iPad 3 release. And building on that, it's been reported that the back panel for the iPad 3 has actually been leaked. And it's basically the same exact thing as the iPad 2. And if it's accurate, then the iPad 3 will have practically the same dimensions. However, it will just be one millimeter thicker. And if that's the case, it's most likely to make room for more powerful parts, a bigger battery, and possibly even a dual backlight system. Also on the back, the cutout for the camera is different, which suggests that the iPad 3 will have an upgrade camera that's more suitable for capturing those picture-perfect moments than the iPad 2's iPod Touch quality camera. Moving away from that, it's been reported that Apple is starting to disable Siri for older non-supported devices that are using Siri through Spire, which is Chapone's Siri port that requires access to a additional server that's loaded with iPhone 4S keys, and they're basically doing this by adding a set activation token, which can easily be bypassed. Now, some users are reporting that simply rebooting the device or respring the device or a combination of both will solve the issue. Other users have to actually SSH in and delete it. And even some users are reporting that it doesn't work at all and you have to restore completely. So whatever the case is for you, you most likely will be able to get Spire up and running on your device. Worst case scenario is you have to restore and re-download it and reactivate Siri through Spire. But it just makes you wonder if Apple is going to pursue keeping older devices from using Siri or not. Moving on, it's been discovered that certain third-party iOS applications from the App Store can access your personal information and it's mostly contact data. However, certain applications might even be able to access 
things like your calendar appointments and what type of music and videos you actually have on your device. So Apple is trying to fix this. And if you want more information on it, you can check it out on the post that's down below in the more info. And finally, even though Apple's app store is only three and a half years old, they're getting ready to hit the 25 billionth app downloaded from the app store, which is absolutely incredible. And to celebrate this, they will be giving away a $10,000 app store gift card and in order to enter to win all you have to do is start downloading applications it doesn't matter if it's free or paid if you do download the 25 billionth application from the app store then you will win however if you do not want to download any applications and you own an iDevice you can still enter by filling out a contact form on Apple's website and I'll have a link to that on my post and that post is down below in the more info as well as everything else I talked about in today's episode also don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release a new video and just remember that the giveaway I'm doing in collaboration with Friday Night Cranks, that's the iPhone 4S giveaway, will be ending one week from today. So that's on the 24th. So in order to enter to win, all you have to do is subscribe to both of us, go to any of our videos, like them, favorite them, and simply leave a comment with the phrase that's on fnciecu.com. Once you do that, you will be entered and you can enter multiple times. So that's it for this episode. I hope you guys liked it. And don't forget, if you want to stay updated more often, just follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.